we are going to check what exactly the meta steps are there in NGS analysis in NGS. So first of all, we all know uh, the sample preparation, the basic concept. I'm not going to focus on this topic. Why means uh, in first semester itself, uh, for the first in first semester itself, most of you learn about this library preparation and uh, sample preparation and uh, what is the machines are available uh, in NGS. You all learn all this thing. For the first year who are there right now, uh, next class you are going to have this uh, sample preparation also different uh, platforms uh, how we can use a different platform for the NGS analysis all this thing you are going to learn in coming classes. Okay, the second step is second major step is the computation analysis. Okay, the computation analysis once we have uh, filtered down the narrow down the variance from uh, some hundred thousand to some hundreds or tens of variants as you have seen last class with Dr. Elango. Uh, in Excel sheet, you have seen more than 70 to 100,000 variants are there. So he used the different strategies to narrow down the variants. He identified the uh, some, I think, 100 or 10, uh, some 20 or 30 variants where we need to validate them by using the Sanger sequencing. That is the final step. So here we have a three different steps. So apart from these, all, all these three steps among them, the most difficult one, most complicated one is uh, computational analysis. So why I'm stretching out this, uh, why it is so complicated means, so here we need to have a so much of computational resources. So computational resources means uh, you cannot you cannot work with your regular laptops. So if you see the exam, when we when you see the exam data from the machine, uh, when it is, has been processed, when you see the data, it is for exam analysis, approximately you'll get six gigabytes of uh, sequence data. For exome only, you're going to get six gigabytes for one patient. For one sample, you're going to get uh, six gigabytes of uh, data. So just think about it, just 1% uh, from the whole human genome. So if you're if you working with the whole genome, if you're working with the whole genome, approximately you're going to get 150 gigabyte of uh, sequence data. 150 GB of uh, sequence data is you're going to get. To run this, to run this, to analyze this uh, sequences, you need to have a very high-end computational resources. So minimum of, minimum of, you just need 32 to 64 gigabyte of memory of uh, computer with the octa-core processor, and you need to have a nearly 12 gigabytes of uh, graphic cards. This is a minimum configuration. Okay, and if you want to, you just forget, if you want to work with the genome, uh, you cannot uh, work with your regular laptop or regular computers. You need to have uh, uh, high-end servers. Okay, so in uh, today's class, we are going to look on the computational analysis. I'm going to tell you some alternative options also is available apart from the high-end servers, where we can work uh, in a web platform, uh, in web platform, so, but there is a, some some problem is there in a web platform. There is a limited size is there. In uh, one slot, you can work with the exome sequencing only. So you cannot do an analysis of uh, genome sequencing. Okay. So let us start with this one, uh, NGS uh, data analysis. So what exactly the key modules we are going to discuss? Uh, first, I'm going to give some basic information about each and every module. Uh, in the second session, I mean, we're going to start a second session from 11.30. Uh, second session, I'm going to give a demonstration how we can analyze the uh, NGS data when it when it comes from the machine, okay? So these are the six, five key modules are there uh, we are going to discuss. One is raw data output, okay? So what is the output of uh, NGS analysis, sorry, uh, from the machine? And second one is what is the quality of that sequence? and sequence alignment, how we can align the sequence uh, with the reference genome and uh, how we can call the variants and variant annotations. I mean, uh, you have seen that Excel sheet. Th those are everything is variant, variant annotation, like uh, uh, the minor frequency scores, whether it's a mid-sense intron variant. Okay, so you have seen that all those annotations are there that is called as variant annotation. And we are going to see some of the software which is uh, freely available for us uh, to do the NGS analysis. So to, to, to work on these key modules, each and every module has its own software. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for academic people, we don't have a cumulative software, like uh, one software is not available to do this analysis. 
for each and every module we need to depend on the uh, different softwares there are some non commercial softwares av available but they are very very expensive okay so let us start with the raw data so here i am going to discuss uh, i'm going to talk with the only with the illumina illumina machine so i'm not going to talk with the other things why so, means uh, nowadays we are only working with the illumina platform so okay so here after the sample preparation when you load the sample into the machine when you load the sample in the machine first the file you are going to get the raw data output is dot bcl format okay so dot bcl format bcl means base call per cycle okay here it will record whenever the base has been called automatically machine has machine going to record that base and store in a dot bcl format file okay so not only it will record the base Per, uh, per cycle and also it will record the quality of that particular call how much the quality is there okay so here that bcl format file consists of a base basis and all along with the quality of each and every call so uh, the beauty of this dot uh, bcl format is it has it consists of uh, multiple sequences from different sample in one bcl format file okay so all the bcl format files if you have any doubts you can you can stop me okay so if you have any doubts you can stop me uh, you can uh, unmute your uh, uh, screen uh, unmute your mic you can ask me uh, if you have any clarification okay so multiple sequences uh, not only one sequence multiple sequence multiple sequence we can easily uh, different type of samples are uh, loaded in the dot bcl format file dot bcl format file not only consists of one one sequences multiple sequence has been embedded in a dot bcl format but it is it is just a one file for example if you have a, a 10 sample if you load at the 10 samples in a, the machine all the 10 sample information has been stored in a dot bcl format file so unfortunately you cannot view this dot bcl format file why means uh, it is it is consist of a completely integers uh, the program itself able to recognize this dot bcl format file we are not okay so we have to convert them into the universally acceptable format file universally acceptable format file that is called as a fasta q format file so you can see here uh, this is the bcl format file you can see the so many samples are there inside for example here in this case so we have two samples are there so by method called as a demultiplexing so they use a software they use a algorithm called as a demultiplexing they use a method called as a demultiplexing by using the demultiplexing they will divide uh, they will separate the sequences uh, into two different categories so i will tell you how exactly okay so let's start this one uh, the session uh, okay so bcl format file uh, base call per cycle uh, it's also recorded not only basis it is also going to record the quality for the each and every basis so as i told you the 10 sample are more than 10 sample we can easily record it by the one bcl format file one bcl format file consists of a numerous uh, numerous sequences numerous type of uh, numerous uh, numerous number of sequence has been recorded in dot bcl format file so the first step is the first step is conversion of bcl to fastq so how we can do that one is by method called as a demultiplexing so as i told you here so we have a, a bcl format file this is a bcl format file where it consists of a two different type of sequences are there so by method of demultiplexing they have been classified into or they divided into two different uh, sequences not only two sequences okay for example if you have a 10 sequences are here so it can easily divide them into the 10 sequences by using the demultiplexing method so how they are going to carry out mean for each and every sample for each and every sample they are going to have a, a specific barcode for example things uh, just things that here we have the first one first sequence it in the initial page initial page it consists of its barcode it is specific for that particular sequences okay so by the algorithm by the algorithm they used in the bcl to fastq that by method of called as a demultiplexing they classified uh, they divided the, the samples into various classes so here uh, the software the software whatever the software they use 
Illumina generally they used of BCL2 FastQ conversion software. This is the most famous software. Uh, this is this is come with the machine only. Okay, you are not going to get this one uh, from uh, outside. And if you are an academic person, you don't have money, so there is an external option is also available for us, <clears throat> like BCL2 FastQ conversion. BCL2 FastQ conversion, it's a Linux or Unix based software. And one more point I just want to highlight you. So whatever the software we are going to use for this NGS analysis, for example, if you think so, if you want to work the NGS analysis, most of the software, most of the software will support only Linux or Mac. Okay, it, there is no Windows based software are available. So completely the NGS analysis, if you are working with the academic license if you want to work with a free software only you have to work with a my uh, with linux mostly with the linux or sometime it is familiar with the mac also okay so conversion of uh, bcl to fastq can done by the two software one is uh, the illumina itself they're going to provide for you and second one is a fastq format so this is a fastq format we call this one as a universally acceptable format where we can easily read the sequence, what exact the information is uh, inside that sequence, inside that file. Okay. Before I am going to uh, give you a, a very brief on the FastQ file, I just want to give you a sequence library structure. How exactly it looks like? As I told you, so when you when you when you check the sequence, when you check the sequence from the uh, BCL format file. It consists of a barcode. Okay, you can see here there is a barcode is available. So in barcode, and also you can see the adapter. This is the adapter region. Okay, this is the adapter region where the primer is going to bind in this region, and you can see the sequencing is going to carry out here. Okay, so and also you can see the one more adapter will be there. So one more adapter will be there here. Okay, so one more adapter will be here. You can see here, uh, and also uh, it's going to carry out. Like Illumina going to carry out two types of uh, uh, runs. They're going to carry out two types of run. One is single, single paid, single end, single end run, and second one we call as a paid end, a paid end run. Okay, so single end run means what is single end run mean? The sequencer reads a fragment from only one end to other. Okay, so it uh, reads the fragment from one, only one end to other. Okay, yeah. generating the base sequences. If it is pair end, pair end, reading start from one one read, finish this direction. Okay, so finish this direction at the specific read length, and then it start another round by reading from the opposite end of the fragment. Okay, it will read one more time uh, from the opposite read of the fragment where it will generate the very high quality sequences. Generally, Illumina nowadays, uh, whatever the Illumina uh, now we are running, they are going to get the paid runs. Okay, for, uh, for example, okay, so sorry, uh, most of the Illumina, uh, Illumina platforms nowadays, we are going to get the parent. It means we are going to get the both forward stand and also the reverse stand. Okay, for one sequencing, if you are perform the one sequence, you are going to get two files, two files. One is for the forward stand, another one for the reverse stand, okay? So you need to have a two files, then only your sequence quality will be very high. Okay, you can easily calculate the quality of the sample, this should be very, very high, okay? <clears throat> Whenever you perform the sequencing by using the Illumina, you are going to get a paid end runs only. So it means forward stand also you're going to get, and also you're going to get the reverse stand. For one sample, you're going to get two two files, okay? Two files. One is forward sample, say a file, and another one is a reverse sample one. Is there any doubts here? If you have any doubt, you can unmute your uh, screen, you unmute your mic, you can ask me a doubt. Okay, so let us go back to the next step. Okay, let us go to the back to the next step. Okay, so what is the conversion of BCL to FastQ? After conversion of BCL to FastQ, uh, 
if you open the bcl uh, if you open the fastq format file you will find the four different strings are here okay four different strings are here these are the four uh, four different informations are available three different sequences are here so one is just let me unmute my phone mute my phone okay so when you open the fastq format file you're going to get four lines okay this one two and three the first line we call as a sequence name line okay sequence name line and second line is sequence base okay where the uh, quality has been called by the machine and this plus sign is called as a quality line break quality line break so third one we call as a quality score r fred score first one is sequence name second one is sequence basis and third one is we call as a quality line and quality break this is the fourth line so this first line it's not important that not that much important but still i want to explain you i want to give a, a information about what exactly this one is okay what exactly this one is so here always the faster faster is going to start faster queue is going to start from the at the rate symbol okay you can see the at rate you can start from the at the rate symbol okay so here after that this one is called as a instrument id okay I think everyone is seeing my cursor right its cursor is visible visible for everyone right okay good okay so here first one is this is we called as one as a instrument id what exact what type of instrument they are using so this 34 is called as a run number a run number and this flow cell id this one is a flow cell this first string completely related to the instrument okay so first string is completely related to the instrument you need not to do anything with this but you have to know what exactly the instrument type is there what type of run they are working on and what is the flow set id each and every flow cell they are having a specific id if you want to more detail about the instrumentation you have to look on the analytical purpose analytic purpose of uh, that uh, particular uh, instruments okay i am not going to discuss more about it so here this lane this is a uh, this is called as a lane and this is a tile and this one is called as xyz uh, xyz the peak position maybe you have seen that one the sanger sequence thing so you have seen histogram electrogram where you will find the peak okay here also it will detect the peak position automatically it will do, going to detect the position this is a xyz xy peak positions xy peak position of the electrogram and uh, this is a read number okay and this one is n call with uh, n with call as one as a filter what type of filter they are using and this one is uh, controls how many controls are there in your sample uh, sorry not control this one is a sample number sample number at final step maybe here i, I missed something in final you will get uh, the uh, sample number how many samples are there in your bcl format file for example if you have a six sub bcl uh, six sequences it will recorded here as a six if you have only one it will show you as a zero not one it's going to show you as a zero for you okay this is a first string with the first string so where you will get the mostly related to the sequence uh, machine information the second line second line you are going to get the the base call uh, the basis all the basis which has been recorded here okay so third line as i told you it's a quality line break it's there is no nothing is there nothing is uh, nothing we can do with this one third one is very important one the quality score quality score means what is a fred score i mean what is the quality of that base when the machine has been called whether it's accurately called or it is a, a more false positives are there it is going to determine by the some kind of symbol okay some kind of uh, symbol that is we call as an american standard code symbol american standard code symbol asc american uh, standard code symbols so each and every american uh, standard code symbol they are having a specific quality value specific fred score values okay 
So let us see this one. I just want to, I just want to give you some little bit math on this uh, how they are going to calculate the uh, probability of uh, error. So how they are going to calculate this? Uh, qual- how they are going to calculate? The, how they are going to calculate the quality of each and every base pair? How accurately they are? So they are going to calculate the quality of the base pair by the call, phrase called as a Fred score. We call this one as a Fred score or quality score. Okay, Fred score or quality score. So what is Fred score means? Both are same. Okay, so quality score or Fred score are both are identical. What is Fred score mean? Fred score measures the base quality in the DNA sequence. It will measures the what is the quality of uh, bases in a DNA. Uh, what is the quality of uh, base quality in a DNA sequence? Fred score estimate what is the probability of an error in the bases. Okay, what is the probability of error when the machine has been called the base? Okay, always don't think this. Always uh, machine is going to do hundred uh, percent base call uh, accurately. Always it's going. Sometime it will going to make a mistake. Okay, we are going to. We need to identify what is the probability of and what in which condition in a, in how many times it's going to make a mistake. In, in for example, if it is running hundred times in hundred times. The machine, how many times it's going to make a mistake? Okay, whether whether it's going to call, uh, uh, whether it's going to call hundred percent right or something something will wrong. So we're going to check the probability of Fred score estimate the probability of an error, the base uh, the base call in the base call. Okay, so here the probability of base call error is ranging from the they give a range from zero to one. Zero to one means. Zero is a score which is having it means very very high quality. One means your sequence is very bad. The range is from zero to one. If it is one means your your uh, your sequence are uh, completely gone. If it is zero, it means very very high accurate. It doesn't make any mistake. So it's always range the Fred score the quality score is always range in between the uh, zero to one. Okay, so here. Uh, generally, in bioinformatics, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just give me one minute. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> in bioinformatics, generally, uh, frequently we are using the negative log scoring. Maybe you have seen in the second semester, so last semester also when we work with the gene expression data, we use this log values. We frequently use this log values. So why we generally use this log value means it will give a clear idea about the error rates. Okay, it will give a clear idea about the error rate. So in case if you want to maximize our ability to detect uh, to, to detect very rare events. We have to use this uh, negative log values. Okay, so let us see. Most of the sequences, most of the sequence base calls, the Fred score should be twenty. Okay, just you need to remember the quality score of uh, any base call, uh, any base call should be more than twenty. What is this? Twenty is twenty is equals to the p value is zero point zero one. Okay, if we have a probability of error zero point zero one, it means uh, we have one chance of error, one percent chance of error. It means in scientific manner, if you talk with a scientific manner, a uh, little bit maths we need to add one into ten to power of minus two, one into ten to power of minus two. It means one in one hundred. Okay, if the base has been called hundred times. Sorry, uh, if the machine has been called the base hundred time, one time if we make some mistake one time, the p score should be p p should will p score will be zero point zero one, zero point zero one. Okay, so one percent of chance of error is equals to twenty. Okay, one percent of chance of error is equals to quality score twenty. Okay, let us uh, let us do this one in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to explain you a little bit more on the logarithmic values, how we can convert this value into the quality score. Okay, so I will show you here. So we have a, a, a web based. 
okay so first for example things that here uh, as i told you is the 10th to power of uh, 1 into 10 to the power of minus 2 is equals to 0.01 okay let us convert this one into logarithmic values okay let us see here 1 into 1 into 10 to the power of so minus 2 okay so my 10 to the power of minus 2 is equal it's be it is equals to 10 to the power of minus 2 so we just need to add this p value so the p value as told you here this is the p value you need to add this log 10 to you need to multiply this log 10 into the p value okay so here log 10 this is a log 10 so here 10 to the power of okay so here 10 to the power of minus 2 Minus two. Okay, so the value it should come as a minus two for you. Okay, so the value is minus two. If we multiply this, if we multiply this uh, with the minus ten, with minus ten, so you're going to get the quality score. You can see here the quality score is twenty. The quality score, the Fred quality score is twenty. Similarly, if we have a uh, if you have a, a p score of 0.01 it mean uh, the error will error will 1000 in 0.1% chances of error is equals to 30% uh, q score is 30% it means in scientific way if you talk is going to make uh, one in 1000 okay the error is will come as a one in 1000 if the p value is coming as 0.001 it mean one in 10000 when the base has been called 10000 time it's going to make a 1% of a uh, mistake okay so hope it is clear if it is not uh, let me explain one more time for you if it is clear tell me it's fine is it clear okay so let me explain one more time for you the fred score uh, fred score okay so whatever the information here this is called as a uh, acs code american standard code i'm going to explain it more on american standard code after the fred score okay this each and every 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 letter determine the quality quality of uh, uh, the bases quality in the sense of fred okay in the mean of fred quality score is equal to the fred score equal to the fred score okay so what is fred score is fred score is measure for the base quality in the dna sequence so fred score estimate the probability of an error in the base color okay what is the what is the probability of error how much probability is there when the machine has been called uh, called a particular basis okay so always don't think that as i told you uh, it's not going to make a mistake so even the illumina claim that uh, the sequence is 99% accurate okay they are didn't say 100% accurate 99% max 1% always you have a chance to the chance to get the error we need to identify the errors if you are able to identify the errors uh, the weak cards then we can eliminate them we can easily eliminate that's why we need to have this uh, fred scores so as i told you here uh, a negative log is a uh, very important for us to understand this uh, fred score okay to it will maximize our ability to detect the very rare event which is going to happen in the machine okay so if we have a probability of error 0.01 okay 0.01 that is 1% of chance of error 1% chance of error okay if we calculate in logarithmic values uh, so in scientific manner 1 0.01 is equals to 1 into 10 to the power of minus 2 1 into 10 to the power of minus 2 don't confuse with the e e is equals to 10 1 into 10 to the power of minus 2 if you calculate 1 uh, 1 into 10 to the power of minus 2 you're going to get a value of uh, this one okay so this 1 into 10 to the power of 0.01 so 1 into 10 to the power of minus 2 this is the p value here you can see here log 10 multiply by 1 into 10 to the power of minus 2 you going to get a value called as a minus 2 minus 2 multiply by 10 you are going to get a q score you are going to get a q score of 
I told you, see, the Q score of your sequence should be always more than 20. Okay, it should be more than 20. So nowadays, nowadays we are going, to, we are getting very high quality sequences, very high quality. It's, it's getting more than 30 or 40. So it's the most reliable sequence we are getting from the Illumina machine. But you have to remember the quality score should be always more than 20, not less than 20. Even the 19.5 also is not acceptable. So it should be more than 20. If you have a score of 30 and 40, then it's a very, very high quality one. Okay. So I told you here. So here, in a, you mean a, in a faster Q file, they're not using this uh, direct values. They can use instead of this one, they can add, uh, if they have a chance, they can add this uh, integers like uh, numbers. If you add the numbers to this fill, already as I told you, it's uh, it's uh, six gigabytes of uh, uh, memory, uh, memory is going to take, space storage is going to take uh, to to store this uh, all the sequence information. If you uh, add all this integer, all these numbers, the size of the file is going to become very, very big. Even the system is not able to recognize that one. That's why they gave this American coding system. So that is called as a American standard codes. American standard codes. Okay. So each and every letter, you can see this uh, FRED score has been uh, translated into American standard code letters. Okay, so here, this, this each and every, you can see here, each and every letter has its quality score. Okay, and also the P score, P score and quality score. And you can see this number, this is a serial number of, this is a serial number of this uh, particular code. Okay, so there are two standards are there. If you are working with the Illumina, the FRED score is going to start, uh, the number is going to start from the 64. You can see here, it's going to start from 64. If you're working with the Sanger machine, the number is going to start from 33. This is standard, this is a standard American standard code, okay? We cannot change this one. So this this information, they're not only using for the uh, uh, sequencing type, so even uh, for the different type of, uh, to build a different type of algorithms also, uh, American uh, standard course has been uh, highly useful. Why means if you use the uh, integer, if you use the uh, numbers, it's going to take uh, so much of uh, so much of space in the files. That's why they are preferring this uh, ACS file, ASC files. Okay, so let us let me give you one example. Maybe you understand much better about uh, uh, the Q score. Okay, for example, here this is a sequence we have. Okay, I want to check what is the FRED quality of this G. Okay, this is the Illumina sequence. This is the Illumina sequence. I'm going to check here. So I'm going to check here, Illumina. Okay, so is G. Okay, G here, the number of uh, number of uh, G is, okay, 71. Okay, the number of uh, G is 71. 71, you can see here. Sorry, not G, it's G. The number is G is a uh, seventy one. So here, the FRED score has been started. Uh, the base, the, the code number has been started with a sixty four. Always, you need to subtract it. If you subtract the sixty four minus uh, minus seventy one, okay. So let us do that one. Sixty four minus seventy one. So you're going to get a seven, okay? Yeah, seventy one minus 64 okay the number of uh, this one is a uh, seven now we need to convert them into the logarithmic values now we need to convert them into the logarithm value to check the what is the probability of error is there what is the probability of error is there okay so here let us convert them into logarithmic values so 10 to power of the number is seven here and as i told you you always need to use the minus 10 okay we need to subtract or we need to divide them with the minus 10 okay so the error is you can see here 0 0.199 it means you have a 19 percent okay so 19 percent chances of error is there 
Okay, not in uh, one in hundred. We have a zero point one ninety percent chance of nineteen point nine percent of chance of error is there. Uh, it means the quality of this base is very very poor. Okay, let us convert this form into the logarithmic values. Okay, let me convert this one into log values. As I told you here, this is the log value where you can generate the Q file. Okay, I mean the quality score you are going to get from this value. Okay, first we need to convert this log ten into p. Log ten. Okay, so log ten into p. The p value is here. Okay, p sorry, p value is here. Zero point one nine nine five. Zero point one nine nine five. Okay, so you can see here you got the minus zero point seven into into multiply by minus ten. Okay, you can see this value seven point zero zero seven. So same value, the same value we got here. Okay, the FRET score quality. Even if you want to cross check that one, you can see here the FRET quality Q quality score here for G is seven, as exactly we got from this uh, calculation, and the P value is also uh, zero point one nine nine five. Okay, like this we can calculate, we can easily calculate the quality of each and every base pair. This is very important for you when you are working with the uh, when you are working with the faster QC format file. This is one of the major step. This is a major step to understand the quality of your protein, quality of your sequence. Sorry, okay. Uh, one thing we have to remember: if you pass the fast Q form, uh, fast QC format file, then only you can perform the downstream analysis. That's why people will uh, spend more time on this faster QC to check the quality of the sequence. Okay. Is it good? Uh, is it fine? Or I need to explain one more time for you. Is it fine? Okay, good. So, okay, let's let's uh, move to the second next section. Okay, so here, okay, so here, the software the generally uh, to check the quality of the sequence. We generally prefer to use a faster QC format, faster QC software. Okay, this faster QC very easy one. Uh, even it is going to work in a uh, uh, Windows also, Windows, Mac, uh, Linux, anywhere. So in the web platform, so many web platforms are there. We can where we can check the quality of your sequence. It's not going to do anything with anything with your sequence. It's not going to modify. It's not going to change anything. It's going to give you only the report for you. What is the quality of your sequence? So the software we called as a faster QC. We are going to discuss more uh, brief on this faster QC when you are. I mean, I'm going to give a demo classes for you. Okay, so here uh, you can see the first one. This is a very important one. This is the only graph we are going to look. Base per sequence quality. Base per sequence quality. Okay, so here, uh, if your sequence has been, you can see the FRED score here. This is the FRED score. Okay, these are the FRED score. As I told you, the FRED score should be more than 20. You can see here in this graph, they have a three different section. So you can see this color, this color spectrum is uh, good and this is a uh, reasonable. Okay, if you have a, uh, if your sequence is falling in this region, it is very, very poor quality. So here position in the read base pair. Okay, read means, uh, uh, for example, uh, here we have 39 base pair reads are there. So the first in a first base pair, the quality of this read quality of this uh, base is very good. Okay, it's uh, it, it's going to calculate an average. It's going to calculate an average of uh, a read at first base pair. At first base pair, an average read, so it's almost is very good. But you can see here, the line is drastically uh, decreasing. Okay, it's falling down. So you can see here the error of uh, at 27 base or uh, 25 base is drastically drastically decreasing. Okay, so, and also the sequence is not good at all from the 27th position from 27 position to uh, 39 position or 40 position the sequence is completely it's not reliable it's not reliable at all we cannot trust him so if it is falling under this region you have to remember if it is falling under this region this lines this line is falling under this region it means 
the sequence, uh, the base call by the machine is unreliable. It's not correct. Maybe it's not correct. Always, if you work with the same sequence, always you have a chance to get a false positive one, very high number of false positive ones. That's why we need to take care about the quality check, whether it is uh, all the sequences are coming in the good or reasonable, kind, uh, reasonable uh, even the nowadays we are not considering the, even the reasonable one also. So we almost uh, preferring to use this, uh, the high quality sequence, high, high quality sequences only. Okay. If it is, you know, if it is coming in the poor quality, you always need to remove them. Okay. How we can remove them. So there is the option is available for you. You can see here, this is the option. Trimnomatic, the software called as a Trimnomatic, where it will, it will help you to crop or trim the sequences. Okay. For example, you can see here. So this is a sequence. So this is actually, these are two are different sequence. I just want to give you an example. That's why I kept this one. Okay. For example, here, you can see here, there are few, may, many errors are there. Uh, very poor Q score is there. So after applying, after removing this, after removing this, all this uh, uh, base pairs, now we have a very high quality sequences. So one one thing you have to you have to remember when you are when you are doing with the trinomatic when you are working with the trinomatic you are going to miss the bases from the twenty five base pairs, okay? You are going to get only from one to, for example, you, you trim from the twenty five you are going to get a read from one to twenty three only, okay? Or twenty three or twenty four only. So remaining parts is going to remove our cropped. So. If you are hundred percent sure that it is not needed for you, then only you have to use that one. As I told you, if the sequence is falling in the poor quality, then only you need to use a trimnomatic. So nowadays, uh, Illumina is giving a very high quality sequences for us. I think uh, we don't have, we don't need to use this uh, trimnomatic uh, approaches. Okay. Well, anyway, so I'm going to show you if uh, if you if you find any kind of errors how we can remove this uh, reads, how, how we can remove this basis from the reads. We are going to check in a coming demo class. Okay, so next one is, next uh, very important topic is sequence alignment. First, <clears throat> first BCL has to convert as a faster Q format file. Okay, the faster Q format, first step we need to do the quality check, how much the quality of sequence is there. So after getting the faster Q format file, second step is we need to, map are we need to align the sequence with the reference you know okay so if you are able to align the sequence uh, reference you know uh, if you align the sequence with the reference you know then only you're able to find out what are the variations are there what are the changes are there in the sequence this is a very important step and as i told you here this step uh, we need to align the sequence with the reference you know we need to have a so many so much of uh, computational resources for this step okay so we are generally using uh, GRCH 38 version. Okay, so now we are using the GRCH 38 version. This is the, this is the version uh, used as a reference to align with our sequence. Okay, so if you're talking about the, if you talk about the tools, various tools are available. So many tools are available to this alignment. So among them, the most popular one are Botai. If you are working with the reference genome, okay? So if you are working with the reference genome, you need to use the software called as a Botai, BWA, okay? So BWA and MAQ, okay? Botai, BWA and MAQ. These are the very popular tools where they will help us to align the sequence with the reference genome, okay? These computational, uh, actually they used a process called as a indexing. These three software, they use a, a computational strategy called as a indexing, which works just like a index at the end of our book. Okay, you have seen the index in our end of our book. Uh, generally, uh, to speed up, the, especially the Botai, uh, it uses the algorithm that takes an index of a large DNA sequences and rapidly finding the short sequences within your sequence, okay? So it will try to check, it will try to check the large DNA sequences from the index, okay, and look for the region where exactly the mapping is there uh, by using the algorithm, which called as a short speed algorithm they will use. So the, the algorithm is similar for the Botai and uh, BWA. 
if you see the mac mac generally use the space seed indexing method they use the space seed indexing method where for initially the reads initially you can see here i will show you something here Okay, so here you can see here this is a read just things this is a read we got it from fast IQ format format file so the Mac first initially they divided the reads into four equal fragments okay so four equal coordinate this one we call as a seats we call as a seats Okay, so a reference genome, it's going to check where exactly the mapping is there. So this is the, one of the most popular method. So the difference between this uh, Botai and also BWA and uh, uh, the MAC is Botai and BWA use a technique called as a burrow wheeler transform technique. So burrow wheeler transform technique they use. It is It means it compressed algorithms, okay? It is comp it's called as a compressed algorithms. The whole reference data, whole reference data, it can store in a two gigabytes of uh, uh, two gigabytes of um, uh, storage. You can store in a two gigabytes. But here, uh, in uh, if you see other data sets, other software like uh, MAQ, MAQ, so MAQ, MAQ, they use the different approaches where it needs a nearly fifty gigabyte of memory to align the sequence. Uh, to align the sequence efficiently. So you can see the major difference here, they, they need just need a two gigabyte of memory to align the sequence with the human in the reference genome. But in the Mac, they need approximately a 50 gigabytes of a memory to align the sequence uh, more efficiently. Why it needs uh, uh, so much of space, I mean, as I told you, so each read it has been divided into four different uh, seeds small molecules is going to divide and every time each and every molecule need to check for the index uh, aligned to the proper region so it will take so much of space to do this uh, process okay for this we generally prefer to use a bwa or botai tool both are identical both are almost identical so botai 2 and botai w uh, they are very very similar to each other they, they, are, they are very fast and accurate to perform the alignment okay so this is called as a reference genome alignment if you have a reference then only you have to use this bwa botai or bwa sorry botai or uh, uh, maq tool if it thinks that if you don't have a reference okay for example if you're working with some bacterial species okay then you need to call, use as a use a method called as a de novo alignment Okay, Genova assembly or Genova alignment method. So Genova alum, uh, as, uh, assembly or Genova alignment can done by the very popular tool, Abscess, Velvet, Soap Genova. There are so many tools are available to perform the Genova alignment. In this type of analysis, the read are examined against each other to check for the overlap in order to build the larger context. Uh, larger context called as a uh, larger continuous sequence called as a context. For example, here. Okay, so here the, how they will do. You can view my screen, right? Everyone is able to view my screen, right? Okay, good. So here, uh, for example, here. Okay, see here, uh, as I told you here, it will uh, read or examine against each other. For example, things that are here, we have a reads. Okay, 
Okay, so these are the things that these are the reads of the, your sequence. So they are again they uh, they examine against each other. Okay, they were aligned with each other. Okay, to find out what are the overlapping region. For example, in this case, this is the overlapping region. Okay, so if the overlapping regions are there, then they will record this one. Okay, then record this one. They will align, try to align this uh, smaller region. Okay, for example, here we have a smaller region into the bigger sequences. Okay, they will try to align, superpose this region. Okay, so here they will align this particular region and create as a one particular big reads. Okay, so reads are combined together. Reads are combined together to form a a, a cantic. Cantic means it's a bigger in length. So when you see the read, read is approximately it's uh, it will uh, one to hundred base pair will be there. Cantic it's more. It means it's a hundred to some from thousands will be there. Okay. So here uh, in this type of analysis, uh, they will uh, examine against each other to check the what are the overlap regions are there, and it will build the one specific cantic, the big cantic for you. Okay, so again, they use the context. Okay, they use the context, try to look for the region where exactly the match is there. Then they will align these two. They will align these two and they create a one single context, one single region, one single region. We call this as a, uh, this is called entire genome. They create a one particular entire genome. So, thing you just need to remember, they will try to align the sequence within themselves. Okay, same same reads are uh, if the matching is there, they will align them. They will create as one big contic. Contics are again attached to each other to create a entire genome. This is called as a de novo assembly. This method called as a de novo assembly. So generally in uh, in the humans we don't use that method, or especially the person people who are working with the bacteria and the virus thing, they prefer to use this uh, tool called as a uh, tools called as abscess. And velvet. Okay, so let us see the next step, uh, the output. So alignment of uh, sequence faster data through either a reference genome or a de novo method will major results in the generation of a SAM file. Okay, the first file, the faster queue. Once we got the faster queue, if you perform the by using the BOTI or BWA, you're going to generate the SAM file. Okay, which is universal file format for mapped sequence read. So if you see the SAM file or BAM file, uh, almost they are identical. The SAM file also consists of the same information. What we have seen in the FASTA queue, you're going to get the quality scores, you're going to get the reads, you're going to get um, uh, the instrumentation number, everything will you will get the same in the same way. So the major difference here in the SAM file is, Apart from the sequences and quality score, you're also going to get the uh, the sequence position. Okay, so sequence position. And also you're going to get detail about the specific information about the location, location in the genome, the read map, and more. You will get, uh, you can see here, whether it's a forward stand, negative stand, plus or minus stand, and chromosomal location, also you will get uh, in the SAM file. SAM file and BAM file. Don't be confused with the SAM and BAM both are identical both are very very similar but the bam file is a binary version okay binary version of the sam file it is almost they are identical okay so why mean uh, binary version mean it is more compressed uh, sam file you can see the sam file sam means you have to remember uh okay, here sequence alignment format sequence alignment map file sam means okay so sam SAM and BAM are both are identical, but the BAM is the binary version of the SAM. It means uh, it is more compressed, compressed version of the uh, BAM. Sorry, compressed version of the SAM. The SAM is very high in size. The, we can see the BAM. Uh, we have a very, very compressed data will be there. That's why we generally use the BAM file instead of uh, the SAM file. Okay. The FASTA queue, first it need to convert into a SAM file. SAM file, it will convert as a BAM file by the using the same software uh, we have as a bwf software okay 
So these are the um, SAM format file you're going to get. The same position, as I told you, as I discussed you here, you're going to get a uh, number. So this is a probe number. And also, it's a positive or negative strand, location in the chromosome, and reads, uh, sequence read, and the squ quality scores you'll get. So I'm not going to discuss more about it. So you can see here, uh, if you want to check uh, what exactly the information inside. Okay, so first, uh, you can see here, uh, when I uh, when I check this SAM file, you are going to get the sequence like this, the information like this. So the first one is you're going to get uh, the information about the same thing, what I told you in a faster IQ, uh, about the machine information, flow cell, so all the information you'll get from the one and two. Third one, you're going to get chromosomal number. Okay, where exactly the chromosome, in which chromosome it is located. In, in this case, it is located in the chromosome, mitochondrial chromosome. That's why it is represented as a CHRM. Okay, and uh, and also the four eight, this uh, uh, this uh, coordinate position in the read. Okay, and uh, this uh, FRET quality score. Okay, so uh, and also this one is called as a cigar string. It means how much they have been, how many base pair is aligned with the reference genome. So out of 150 uh, base pairs here we have in this screen, 148 matches are there. Okay with the reference genome. Two are unaligned. Two bases are not aligned properly. Okay, this is a, this is a string. This is a, this is a region where you will get the information. Sixth one. Okay, so 148, uh, the sixth one, this one. Okay, this 148 to MS means 148 base pair is matched with the reference genome. Two is not match. That's why totally we have 150. And it is showing the reference genome match, which specific genome they use, and this uh, FRED quality score. And uh, finally, you will have, see the sequence here. Okay, this is a sequence start to end. And this the uh, quality of uh, each and every basis similarly as it is going to record in, um, as it's recorded in a FASTA-Q format file. And finally, you will get uh, MySeq results. MySeq, sorry, this is a machine is, uh, this, this, uh, this experiment done by the MySeq, you will see my sick parameters are there at the end of uh, the sequence like this for each and every sequence uh, for each and every read you will get uh, this uh, this kind of information this kind of uh, huge information you will get okay so if you run this one in a linux you can find uh, the regions like this so the sequence is like this this is the bam file this is a bam file which is very compressed one very compressed one okay Okay, very compressed one. So now we convert them into the BAM file. So first FASTA Q, for BCL2, BCL2 FASTA Q, FASTA Q to SAM, SAM to BAM. So the next step is we need to call the variant. Now we align the sequence. We align the sequence uh, with the reference genome. Now it's time to call the variants. Okay, so variant calling is a process where we can identify the variant from the sequence data. So variant, variant examines the mapper data with the reference side by side. You can see here, this is, a, this is your reference genome and this is your reference genome. Okay. One minute. Huh? Just one minute. Hello? Islam, sir. No, no, sir. I'm going to demo the demo. I'm going to start the introduction class. I will call you, sir. I call you. Based on the one already, but demo start question to only based on. Okay, so. Doctor, uh, can you make for screen for you, your uh, presentation? So there is a, is a 
So almost here in this condition, in all it's almost in all it's, there is a T there, but it's rough T in the reference, you know, we need to have a A. They will find the variance, they will call the variance based up the different strategy. Okay, so the, the variant calling is uh, uh, this, this uh, the uh, once we call the variant, they will classify into raw variants like a SNP, indel, structural variant. So again, this draw variance has been uh, recalibrated. So they perform the integrative analysis in the variant recalibration, genetic refinement, variant evaluation, and finally we are going to analyze the uh, the variant which is having a very very high call. Okay, this thing, this is just a flow chart. This is a flow chart how we can call the variant. We are going to see in brief when I am going to give a demonstration on the variant calling. Okay. So variant calling is a normal process, not a simple process. For example, SNPs, SNPs are, are uh, indels, they are straightforward. Okay, SNP in morphism is open in one point. We can get one very easy. Structural variant for the structural variation, for example, deletions are there and inversions are there and tendum duplications are there. For them, you need to use a different type of strategy. So here, uh, the program, uh, the program called the GAT genome analysis tool, uh, use the different classification, different classification to identify the structural variations. Okay, so for example, if they want to identify the delta, then not only they are going to check the, they are also going to check the assembly, read pairs, split reads. If you want to uh, know the more information about each and every concepts here, just go and refer paper in the nature paper you will find uh, more information of how they are going to call this variant call the structural variant by different categories so i'm not going to spend more time on it it's going to take a more time to discuss on the structural variants okay so finally what are the tools are available for the variant calling is there are more, many tools out there so the most popular one is the genome analysis toolkit uh, SNP ANOVA, uh, ANOVA, SNP effect, Gemini, IGV, UCSC genome browser. So many tools are there to check the, uh, to call the variance. Okay. The first step is FASTA Q to, sorry, BCL to FASTA Q. So once you receive the FASTA Q file, then you can, uh, you can convert them into the uh, BAM file, BAM file, sorry, SAM file, SAM file. Again, it's going to convert into the BAM file. The BAM file is, uh, we're going to call the variant by using the BAM file, we're going to call the variant where it will generate the VCF file where for you. So in VCF file, you can you can use so many, you can add so many annotations to it. Like, uh, so in BAM file, you got a chromosomal position and a, re a sequence of red. If we have a chromosomal position, it will annotate and it will give you what is the location of the gene, okay, where exact the mutations are there, where exactly the variations are there, what type of the mutations are there, what is the indel mutation, missense mutation, okay, a synonymous mutation. And also along with that, the frequencies, major early frequencies, sorry, minor early frequencies uh, in different population and the prediction scores, the pathogenic prediction scores, so many things. I think you already got that Excel sheet. Dr. Elango explained the explanation. The same sheet you're going to get, generate after the completion of uh, this variant calling. Okay, so once we call the variant, the next step, as Dr. Elango discussed, we need to filter down, narrow down the variants into some tens or uh, uh, hundreds. If you validate them, if you screen them, they can, you just need to validate them by using the Sanger sequencing. Okay, these are the tools. These are the complete basic introduction to the NGS uh, where we can perform from top to bottom, uh, from raw data to Excel sheet, we can easily generate by using all these uh, steps. Now you can unmute your uh, mic. You can ask me if you have any.